So we talked a little bit last week about the claim of a $4 billion loss by Major League Baseball. Of course. Yes. Yes. There we go. <laughs> um, there's my cursor. So uh, Craig Edwards here at Fangrass kind of went through the numbers. And like, Are they real? Are they bullshit? Let's find out. So he did a an extensive job i must say everyone should go uh check it out give them the uh the click the ad revenue etc because baseball blogs are struggling right now shockingly with no season they kind of rely on people checking in throughout the season but there's no season right all right so I'm not as prepared as I thought I was. So they immediately leave out some revenue, the central revenues from MLB itself. And they also left out, because they're cutting the draft down to five rounds instead of 40. And they're only playing payer, uh, players, paying players. Say that three times fast. A <laughs> um, hundred thousand of their signing bonus this year, and then half of the rest next year, and then half of the rest of the year after that. So they're hardly going to spend anything on the draft per team. They didn't include the amount they're going to save from that. Shockingly. Uh, <laughs> um, they didn't include the Blue Jays or radio revenue, which is significant for some teams um do they cut it down because there's not gonna there possibly won't be college baseball or just because we are, are on a short there was time. college baseball there they was. play like 20 games really yeah before they got shut down they start early um like they start their season around when spring training starts okay um they're cutting it down to make it they're cutting down their revenues to make the losses look bigger to get the players to fold and just sign the deal that MLB wants them to sign I think I saw a figure that they said that if they do the prorated salaries that the players would get 89% of revenues and leave the owners with only 11% which sounds absolutely ridiculous because we all know they're not making a ton of money on fans buying tickets and buying stuff at the ballpark they're making some yeah but it's mostly about the tv deals yeah and advertising and whatnot can't make sales on ticket sales if i know but we can't even have fans there so. i know but it's not a significant portion of their revenue but they're saying they're gonna lose all this money because there's not fans there it's like you're gonna lose some sure but not four billion dollars this is their argument um also half a season yeah so right here they're talking about the regional sports network rsn they're saying because there's less games, so they're going to have to give back some money or not get it in the first place because right. there's less games. But most teams own a portion of their regional sports network. So they're just giving back money to themselves. But they're mm. just doing the full total amount that they're losing out on. Yeah. But they're not because they're paying themselves back. Yeah. So that's pretty shady as well. So that bumps the number back down. That four billion keeps dropping lower and lower. They're saying they're gonna lose six hundred and forty thousand for every regular season game. First of all, there's two teams playing the game, so you can't just take eighty-two times thirty, and that's the number of regular season games. You have to cut that number in half. 
Yeah. So it's immediately like, okay, well, what are you talking about then? Right. Um. Also, like, they didn't mention the radio. We already said that before. They're talking about that here, I think. Like, the radio deals, getting money from that? Yeah. They're not in- including that. Cause it's not a ton, but it's still something. Yeah. Well, let's put all the revenue on the table, and then let's talk. And that's what the players want. They want to, They want Major League Baseball to open up their books, and they won't do it. Because then we're seeing how much they're actually making, not just the baseball revenue. Right. I'm doing air quotes. They can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Major League Baseball says is their revenue is not the revenue. It's more than that. If And then they're adding an extra round of playoffs, which would get more on the national DVD deals from Fox and TBS and ESPN and wherever else. It's always on like some random channel like True TV or something. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> what channel's True TV? They got the best deal, <laughs> the cheapest deal to be put on there or something. Like whatever, whoever wants to give us money. Um. So, this section is talking about if, say, they get all the way through the regular season, the short and regular season. Let's say, like, they're 75 games through, right? They're doing 82 games. Let's say there's a second outbreak right then or a bunch of players on some team get it, right? Right. Now, you can't do the playoffs. Now you're missing out on the playoffs. So they're saying, oh, well, to protect us against that, the players need to give up their money as well, you know? It's all about screwing over the players because that's the majority of their output, their loss they're getting so much in revenue their main outcome not income what am i trying to say here what's the word for that (laughs) you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. the main source of money flowing out from major league baseball is player salaries so they want to get that as low as possible of course they've always been trying to do that yeah for as long as there's been professional baseball no different. So, so is Craig Edwards writing this? Yes. <laughs> he, sorry, Craig. <laughs> He's not going to watch this. No one's going to watch this. <laughs> Someone's going to watch this, and I love you. All right. <laughs> the 27 people from last time. <laughs> Was there 27? Yeah. We're going to get more. Hopefully. We'll get, we'll get 28 this time. So, even if there's a breakout proposition or... Even if you're breaking even or even at a slight loss, the money you get for the playoffs make it worth just that chance of getting that money make it worth it to do the regular season is the point he's making here. The financial risk is worth taking, and that's before you even get the potential marketing value of playing versus the potential black backlash of not. Yes, they might lose money this year, but it probably won't be four billion. No, I don't. It's think definitely not going to be four billion right off the bat when you start looking at the numbers. It makes no sense. Right. Because you're not even including the non-baseball revenue stuff. That should be baseball revenue, but they're not going to open up their books for the players. But we still know about some of this stuff, like. This little thing. So, Bam Tech, if you don't know, was a spinoff company of Major League Baseball Advanced Media. Basically, they developed the technology to stream specifically live events, but streaming in general. They kind of invented that technology. Like, the whole thing or just for baseball? Like the whole thing not really but they kind of made that breakthrough because before major league baseball advanced media bam that's what they call it bam tech is a little spin-off company of that before that it was like really really remember youtube back in the day how shitty it was was yeah 
all streaming was like that, if you remember. And they came along, figured it out, and started licensing that technology to, say, the NHL and the NBA and whatnot. So, Disney was reading the tea leaves, seeing, oh, this is probably going to be the next thing. Cable's not going to last forever. We can already see that coming down down the down the pike. Pipe? Is it pike or pipe? I, I don't know. Pipe? <laughs> I feel like it might be pipe. We don't know our phrases. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So they bought BamTech. This is announcing that they bought a 42% stake in BamTech. They had already bought a third previously. So the 42% stake was... billion dollars to Major League Baseball. The owners split that. So they bought an additional 42%. Right. So they own 75%. Three quarters of it. And now it's called Disney Streaming Services. So. I'm not surprised. This was back in 2018. What's happening now? What just came out? Disney Plus. Disney Plus. ESPN Plus came out. Right? Yeah. It's all because of this. And they're raking in the dome. That's a very smart move by Disney. It's also a very smart move by Major League Baseball to sell this to them. Because they're still getting paid out yearly for this. And guess what's not included in baseball revenue? This. This. And Disney is the best company to like... Well, I don't know. The best. But a very smart company to like let kind of own you sort of thing or own this because it's like they make so much money that you're never going to have to worry about it like bankrupting bankrupting well if it, you know even if it does not baseball's problem anymore it's their problem yeah that's true but they're still getting the money for it yeah every year they get a payment for the next like decade or so i don't i don't know the details so anyways, let's talk about some positives. Um, Japan has done a great job fighting coronavirus. They didn't even lock down. They didn't do mass testing. They just kind of did the Japan thing. Just being smart. Trusting people. Their culture doesn't... They don't really touch each other much anyways. When they're talking, they're like facing down. They wear masks all the time anyways. Yeah. That's their air freshener going off. <laughs> They a lot of things are automatic, like vending machines. I mean, I know a lot of people touch that that kind of thing, but like, it's not like a person, you know, touching everything. And, yeah, and you can wipe those down. And you wipe them down. And now the CDC is saying that services don't even matter anyway. So I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, Japan, but, you know, they they're not. It's not like Italy. That's why Italy was hit so hard. It was kind of getting that way, and then they took some preventative measures, but not full lockdown. Yeah. And now Tokyo. I don't know the number today, but yesterday they had two new cases in Tokyo, three new cases. Uh, the day before that. Yeah, in Tokyo, where there's like, I don't even yeah. know how many people are in in that city. Millions, probably. <laughs> if you look at every country, that's where the outbreaks happen. It makes sense. It's the big cities. Yeah, there's think, so many people there. You think Wuhan, a huge city. New York City. Fucking every city in China has like 10 million people, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> they have so many people. New York City, Italy is pretty densely populated. So, it makes sense. You'd think Tokyo would get ravaged, but they've had 750 or so deaths. Which, very sad. Yes. But compared to us, yeah, just now, in Ohio, we have two thousand deaths right, right now. I think that was the number of yeah. yesterday or something. But we're also paying money for coronavirus deaths, so who knows? But their number is certainly a lot higher than seven hundred and fifty. And Japan is so packed in there, you know. Yeah, they have one hundred and twenty million people, I think, just in those islands. Yeah, and Japan's not very big. Like, it's so weird to think, oh, you're like, oh, Japan, the whole country of Japan. But, yeah, like, the whole country of Japan. Mm-hmm. Like, it's tiny. Japan area. 
in square miles. Doing some crack research here. 145, we'll call it 146,000 miles. So maybe let's compare that to like states. Yeah, compare it to like states. Yeah, compare it to Ohio. Or, well, I'm just going to look at. Um, oh, United States? US state and see like what they do. No. So 146,000. U.S. states by size. It's the size of Montana, and they have 120 million people. So, like, say 40% of the U.S. population all moved to Montana. That's so packed in. So Montana is a big state, as we're seeing, it's number four. But it ain't the whole thing. <laughs> it ain't all, the whole of America, you know? Yeah, right. I actually looked up Taiwan. They've had like zero cases, basically. And they are the size of Maryland. And they're an island. And then South Korea has done a very good job. And they are the size of Kentucky. And they're not an island, but they're basically an island because their one land border is with North Korea. Right. Not a whole lot of travel going between North and South Korea. Yeah, no. And then everything else is water. Right. So they can function as an island. So this really helped these three nations is what I'm saying. So they're supposedly, we don't know for sure, but the rumors are going to end their state of emergency tomorrow. Um, and then the Nippon Professional Baseball is gonna announce a plan. They've apparently had discussions with uh, public health experts, along with um, their soccer league, J League, um, discussing like, what are you guys planning on doing? I don't know, blah blah blah. You know, looking at, of course. Taiwan and South Korea, seeing what they're doing. I'm sure, no fans for a while. Um, obviously, they're going to have a Japan series. They haven't made a final decision on the Climax series, which is a term that I love. <laughs> the Climax series. Oh, Japan. I love your English. <laughs> um, that's like their... Playoffs. Their semifinals before the Japan series. Um, so yeah, they're, they're going to get underway here. So will MLB like look to this, will the players look to this and try to figure out like what's the best thing to do? Or? Yeah, I think maybe Japan is a better one to look at and see how they're going to go, but they're kind of like on the same timeline. It looks like as from this, not for coronavirus, but for baseballs with I mean, they're trying to get going as soon as possible. Right. Major League Baseball. And so is Japan. So, maybe. I think it's a better way to look at another, a better league to look at than South Korea or Taiwan. Yeah. Because they had more of an outbreak. And they had to push things back a little more. Now, one thing that they're doing here... With maybe cutting the Climax series is what they're talking about, right? Because they want to... Their priority is a longer regular season. So it sounds like they get more money for their regular season than they do for their playoffs in Japan. So it's a little different situation. We get more money over here for our playoffs. That's why they're expanding the playoffs and shortening the regular season as much as possible. Over here. Yeah. Because the big national deals are about the playoffs mostly right so everything's different with baseball with coronavirus with everything so you can only look at other situations so much so i don't know <laughs> it's hard to look at other different culture and everything 
So yeah, that's what's going on in Japan. Very good news. They're also talking who is going to be tested, how often, under what circumstances, how to handle testing. The players want more testing than was suggested, which is like multiple times a week already. They want more than that. I don't think it's necessary. Over here. Over here? Oof. I mean, I guess to be safe, especially if they'll be traveling. Yeah. Like, I get it. I mean, you can go player by player if you're a younger guy. Uh, I mean, Maybe has not any so much. Of, any of the baseball players been tested yet? Because that test is not. I don't know. But <laughs> Maybe if gonna, once they get it once, I'll be like, okay, never mind. <laughs> like, if you're going to do all this extra testing, that's going to look so bad to do like 10,000 tests a week. Especially. Or something like that. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, what about this guy over here? He needs a test. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> right when you don't test like people who have symptoms that need to figure out if they can go to work or not yeah. or you know just random people that's, everyday people that's a bad look i think they could definitely do some antibody testing on everyone say okay you have the antibodies you're good to go we can we can save so many tests that way i think so too and you can have a tier like okay you have underlying conditions or your family has underlying conditions you can get tested more often they also have perhaps an opt-out for those guys we talked about this last time a little bit um and i think the opt-out is going to work like it just pushes back your deal just one year Hmm. so just get shifted back I mean, that's the choice you're going to have to make, though. Right. And then you take, like, they worked out a, an amount to, for everyone to get paid if there's no season at all already. So I assume they'd probably get that amount, but everything's so up in the air right now. So who knows? Um, the other thing that caught my eye this week was this article by Travis Sochik, who's one of the best writers for baseball. He's on 538.com. <laughs> Catcher is baseball's most endangered position. Now, if you don't know, with the media, the writers don't pick the headlines. That's a stupid title. I think we can all agree on that, right? Because catcher's not going away. Well, the pitcher's got to throw the ball over the plate and just have wild pitches and guys just running around the bases like crazy because no one's there to get the fucking ball right doesn't make any sense so ignore the dumb title (laughs) and he makes some good points here because he's talking about pitch framing so pitch framing is when there's a ball that's like right on the border of the strike zone okay yeah if a catcher is skilled enough he can catch it in a way like on a certain part of his glove to where it looks like a strike but it's actually a ball or if it's right on the line it looks more like a strike than right on the line yeah so they can measure this they can actually look like okay that was clearly a ball just by using their technology you know going back and looking at the games you can figure out what was it actually a ball and was actually a strike regardless of what the umpire said and then you can look at which catchers are better at making balls into strikes right yes now what if they go to an automated strike zone where a robot just tells you this was a strike that goes away right so that's his point but pitch framing as i understand it i mean it's already it's always probably been a thing. It's only it's something that we've started to actually look at and coach within like the last half decade, maybe full decade, you know? It's a recent thing to where we've been focusing so much on it. There's a really silly quote to where it said, Everyone go go read this. It, it was a good article. I'm not knocking him. Um, 
there's other things that catchers do besides pitch framing. But then he makes those points, but then he still says, like, it'll... I don't think he says it. It's a quote from someone else, like a coach. It says, um, catcher will basically be a second DH. You just put anyone back there. It's like, well, if it's an old man who has bad knees, you don't really want him crouching behind the plate. Yeah, that's not healthy for him. You need to be a little bit spry in case the ball hits the dirt and you have to get in front of that thing and block it if there's a runner on second. You can't let that ball go past you because then he's on third all of a sudden. Yeah. Now he's 90 feet from home. I said 180 feet from home. Yeah. Right? So, and then the number one thing a catcher does is calling games, right? Telling the pitcher, throw a fastball, throw it here. Okay, now I'll throw a curveball, throw it here. A really skilled catcher will make an okay pitcher into a good pitcher and a good pitcher into a great pitcher and a bad pitcher into an okay pitcher, right? Yeah. It has nothing to do with the automated strike zone. So this whole thing is a little bit ridiculous. It'll take away some value from catchers to be sure, but it's not going to be a second DH. It's, oh, well. You got a nice bat, so go back there, son. It's like, okay, I never fucking called a game in my life. What do, what do I do? Yeah. So then I was looking at, this is the top 36 prospects. They've been going through every team. They're almost done. Four left. And looking at that team's top prospects. I'm looking at the Cincinnati Reds. This is the Reds. So I saw this right here. He's still a fringy receiver with a big arm. That's another thing catchers do. You gotta throw a second when they're trying to steal. Yeah. You can't just have anyone back there that can't throw the fucking ball. Um He's still a fringy receiver with a big arm, but that may become less of a problem soon. I think he's talking about this article it sounds like it right yeah like i don't know what else that could mean maybe they're expecting him to get better as a catcher that might be it so it sounds like this idea is like already catching on not catching uh -huh. <laughs> so uh yeah that's all i that's all i have for this week not much happening in baseball right <laughs> i know it's a sad world yeah well, hopefully the Japanese league they can figure this, their stuff out. Soon. That way, it'll give us more baseball. It sounds like they got the virus pretty well under control, so they can learn some stuff from the KBO and the CPBL. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, Taiwan's letting fans in the stadium now. That's exciting. That's a positive. Absolutely. And neither Taiwan or South Korea has had any breakout among players so far. Korea's like three weeks in now. I think Taiwan's like five weeks in. So they're doing good. It's less yeah. teams than either Major League Baseball or Japan. So wow. Yeah, I want Japan. Like if Japan takes what they're doing and applies that to what they want to do, and it turns out pretty okay. And then the MLB steps in right after that and does their thing. Mm -hmm. Let's hope. I just really think this whole playing in their home ballparks is a mistake. Because if you're going to learn anything from South Korea or Taiwan is that, yes, they're playing in their home ballparks, but it's such a more secure and less variable situation in those countries yeah it's a lot smaller so you don't travel like you do you would travel here yeah and even the nhl and the nba they're trying to start back up and they're talking about doing hub cities the nhl players association actually just said yeah let's let's do that let's just have it in two cities and they're saying let's just have a 
let's go from i should have brought these stories up my bad let's go from the standings that we ended at when we shut down right the wins and losses so far right and they said let's do a 2014 playoff we'll have the east conference in wherever maybe tampa or something i don't know and let's have the west playoffs wherever else right yeah maybe vegas i don't know i'm just throwing shit out there maybe arizona somewhere in the west (laughs) (laughs) and then let's just do it let's see how it goes and the nba is saying the same thing they like let's get this thing start going and they're talking about doing the rest of the regular season at least as much as they can they'll have the east conference in orlando in the wild world wide world of sports you ever seen any pictures of that Mm-mm. oh my god there we go <laughs> Honestly, like baseball should be kicking themselves for not thinking of this, but the players already shot down the whole. Like, look how many baseball fields are in there. Oh my god, why are they not doing that? Because I don't know. Because <laughs> they have the spring training facilities. Doing it in Phoenix, Arizona, would basically be the same thing. Yeah, true. So that's the route they went, but they have like a, a ton of everything, a ton of basketball courts and everything. Wow. Is that like open to the public or is it just... They have like tournaments there and like have people come out. Like, yeah. Atlanta Braves celebrate 20 years of spring training. At, so the, Atlanta's even has their spring training facility at the Wild World of Sports. It's like, why didn't you think of this? It's right there. But the NBA is saying let's have... Or first talking about having everyone go there. Think about how many hotels are in fucking Disney World. This is in Disney World. So you have your whole family. You fucking give every player a floor of a hotel for their whole family. Right. So then you're not cut off from the ones you love just to make some money. You know? Yeah. Like, it makes so much sense. And then, so now they're talking, let's do the East Conference in Orlando and let's do the West in in Las Vegas. Because they have a ton of hotels there, too. I assume a bunch of basketball courts. I don't really know where they're going to play there, but that's what they're saying. I'm sure they got... In March Madness in Vegas? Don't people go... I mean, March Madness is, like, all over the country. Okay. I thought someone... I thought someone I knew went to Vegas for the March Madness games. Probably. They have like a bidding system sort of thing. Oh, maybe that's what he was doing. Or it's like, okay, you get it. Like Dayton always has the first four. But then it, the rest of it moves around. Is my understanding. I'm not a big college basketball guy. So, I mean, if both those leagues, this is my point. If both those leagues are, the players are saying like, yeah let's do it let's just let's play like what's the problem with baseball i guess we're talking about full season versus like just finishing up the season maybe that's part of it but you could start out and then see where it goes right because it the whole system the whole coronavirus thing is getting better yeah as the weeks go by absolutely so it's like start off there start there for i don't know three weeks or something Mm -hmm. then go from there you know i don't know i see what you're saying it makes sense like why not like i'm just worried that we're going to start it back up and everyone's going to be traveling and then a bunch of our players are going to get sick and they're yeah, you're just adding too many variables into it. But look at me trying to tell professional athletes what they should and shouldn't do. Right. I don't know. Um, yeah. 
That's it. That's all we got. <laughs> um. Thanks for listening. Like and uns- un- unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. I need to get that. Uh. Jesse Pickman. No, <laughs> what's his name? Aaron Paul. Is that his real name? Yeah. From Westworld unsubscribe i need to get that <laughs> i need that clip and just pop it in at the end of the videos <laughs> unsubscribe <laughs> but really subscribe thanks bye <laughs> watch your hands bye